I just built a drawer from scratch on my DIY car camping setup and I'm gonna bring you guys along for the full journey so you can learn from my experiences. Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Hawk and Sager. I'm an outdoor adventurer based in Utah. And one of my favorite types of outdoor adventures is car camping. Now two years ago, I built this car camping platform so I can sleep in the back of my SUV and I absolutely love it. It's been so great for all of my adventures, but I haven't changed a thing since I originally built it. Now for a while, I've been wanting to upgrade the storage on this thing. On the left side of the car camping platform, there's a small tote and just other couple random pieces. So I've been thinking and I finally committed to building a drawer. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna rewind about a week back to when I started this whole project. So this is what the back piece of my car camping bed platform looked before this whole project. I brought it to the back and turned it over so I could start some measuring. I measured so many times to make sure I got this right. It's so important to plan and measure twice so you try to minimize any mistakes. And then I got to designing. I sketched up a few different views of what it would look like in the car, taking into account the measurements I had taken. So the plan was to build a very simple plywood drawer. With these designs, I was able to take into account the wood thickness so I could account for that in my measurements as well. But this made it super easy to know which supplies I needed when I went to the store. Well, we got another project going again, so you know where I'm heading. We're going to Home Depot. Let's go. Guys, I'm gonna be honest, love Home Depot. Has the most banging theme song possibly ever, but wow, do I feel dec decision fatigue in there. I see so many options for wood and I have no idea what I'm doing. I went for pretty cheap but felt hard, so I think I got the right kind, but it'll probably work and I'm just overthinking it, but yeah, too many choices. All right, I decided to wait till the next day. We're actually gonna um, do the cutting now. So I have one of the side pieces measured out, but I'm just gonna re-measure it to be sure. Measure twice, cut once, as they say. So let's do that. Ready to do the first cut, safety first as always. I look sharp. All right, one thing I ran into that you should probably check is I got this plywood and when I cut it, I didn't check both sides of it. So there's a couple of gouges here. Now, this isn't really gonna infect the drawer too much. This thing is still strong, but I have this wood filler anyways. So I'm gonna put some wood filler into some of these cracks just to help keep it strong. So at this point, I had all the pieces of wood cut. I knew that would go pretty smoothly. I had experience doing that, but now I had to put them together to actually assemble the drawer. Now you can definitely do countersunk screws with just drilling the hole right through the wood, but I wanted to try pocket hole joinery again because I didn't want to see all the screws visible all throughout the drawer. Now I've actually tried to do pocket hole screws before and it didn't go so well. I think I was using too hard of a wood. The jig skipped all over, but I've heard it's easier to do in plywood. So I was gonna set out to try and do it here. So the last time I tried to do some pocket holes, it didn't go so well. So I'm gonna practice on a piece of scrap wood before doing it on my actual drawer pieces. Let's give this a try and see how it goes. Now the actual drilling of the pocket holes went pretty well. Um, it went way better than the last time I tried to do this. I was using way too hard of a wood where pocket hole joins are not recommended. And as you can see, I'm inspecting this and the hole was pretty solid. It was looking like what I'd seen in the pictures but I made one key mistake. I screwed up. I'm gonna have to recut those pieces. That's why I got extra plywood, so I'm glad I did. Without the stopper being set to the correct length, it made way bigger holes than I needed to. But you live and you learn, so we're gonna recut two pieces and get back at it. Now it's important to realize that a project like this, you can't expect to get everything right. 
especially someone like me who doesn't do woodworking very often. I can do all the preparing in the world, but I'm still bound to make a few mistakes, and I have to forgive myself for that. In the end, I just had to recut the wood and then drill the holes at the correct length. It was all good. All right, guys, we're part of the way there. Uh, I got all the pocket holes drilled. I think I did it right. We're going to assemble it soon and see how it actually looks, but take a look. Now what you see me doing here is pushing the pieces together and securing them using wood glue. I used the other pieces of wood as a brace so it could hold together while the glue dried. Alright guys, I think I'm going to put the first set of pocket screws in. I'm nervous if I'm being honest with you, so we'll see how this goes. Gotta wait for the glue to set, so. Cheers, guys. So this is the front piece, and I just wanted to make sure it fits under here before attaching it to the drawer, because it's a little bit bigger than the drawer to make space for the tracks. And it doesn't quite slide up, so I gotta trim this down a little bit. Guys, it worked out. It actually looks pretty good. My mom and I were just texting and she says I probably should have put the pocket holes where you wouldn't see them, so put them on the bottom, but that's okay, I don't care, it looks good. I mean, come on. Anyways, I think I'm going to put some carpet on the bottom so it'll cover up the pocket holes anyways, so not too worried about it, but that is a funny thing I learned about this process. Alright, I'm back, did a little work off camera, um, I stained my pieces. Honestly, it's not my favorite color. I used this. It was mostly for protection um, because I wanted to protect against moisture and stuff and this is a one-step protection in color. So, like I said, the color's not my favorite. It's just a little more gray than I would like, you know? So I might paint it in the future, who knows, but once the stain dries we can move to installing the actual drawer using the drawer slides. The drawer was finally assembled. I was feeling super good up until this point but I had another challenge up ahead. I've never actually built and installed a drawer, so I didn't know how the drawer slides actually work. When you're using side-mounted drawer slides, you're supposed to get pretty close to the actual length of the drawer, but Home Depot only had up to 24 inch drawer slides from what I could find, and my drawer was about 28 inches long, so that was a little worrying, and also the actual installation and getting the slides aligned on either side was concerning to me too. I didn't want it to be cockeyed or not roll out correctly, so let's see what happened in this next challenge. Just read through the installation instructions for the drawer slides, so I gotta take these apart and then mark an inch and a quarter up from the side of the drawer to install the one piece on them. So we're gonna do that now. Now we pray that things are level. <laughs> Looks good. This ain't easy. Um, I got the drawer slides on and now I need to do some more measuring from the front of the drawer to where the other slides are gonna go. And let's just hope I get this right. All right, they're installed. I feel like this isn't gonna slide on, I don't know. First time installing drawer slides. It's a moment of truth, here we go. All right, I'm close. It works, but it's a little cockeyed, so I gotta move the one side up just a tiny bit. But honestly, it's not a bad for the first try. And after a few minor adjustments, here it was in its final state. The stain was looking better, it was sliding incorrectly, things were good. And just like that, we were on to the final step, loading into the car and testing out just to make sure it worked correctly inside the vehicle. It was incredibly satisfying to slide that drawer out for the first time and see it working as intended. So I drive a 2020 Hyundai Tucson and there's a little bump in the trunk. So I knew the drawer wouldn't be able to clear it if it was flat against the ground like the rest of the build. So I had to take into account that little gap when I was designing it. 
It's just another testament to how careful planning and measuring will help you have success in these kinds of projects. For a final finishing touch, I installed these self-adhesive carpet squares into the drawer and on top of the platform that I had removed them from. They're pretty easy to install, you just stick them on, and if you need to cut them, an exacto knife will go right through them. I love them for this kind of thing. And this is what it looked like in the end. So I loaded it up with all my gear and tested it out with the full weight of everything in it, and it was functioning perfectly. It was so exciting to see this in action, and I'm excited to use it out in the outdoors. Come soon. So with that piece in place, I took the opportunity to set up my full camping setup with the mattress and everything, and this is what it looks like in the back of my vehicle, drawer and all. And there you have it, that was the project all finished. And I was super happy with how it turned out, especially coming from someone with very minimal woodworking experience. The drawer looked great, in my opinion. I might add a few more modifications in the future, maybe a drawer latch to help keep it closed while I'm driving, especially on those bumpy back roads. And I definitely need to get a handle as well. But that's the bulk of the work done. If you have any questions about the process or measurements or anything, please leave them in the comments down below. Hope you guys enjoy the video, and I'll see you in the next one.